I know some of this physics may seem a little boring to you guys. I can't help it, that's just the way it is. I'm trying to teach you guys in layman's terms everything I know about the hydrogen atom, the oxygen atom, electrolysis, the table of elements. I mean, soon I'm going to show you guys how to build some of this stuff, okay? You're going to build some of the best reactors on the planet. Some of the most powerful oxygen hydrogen fuel cells on the planet, okay? I'm going to show you guys how to build some of the wet cells you've never seen. There's some of them maybe you have. This is my Pulsar underwater reactor power plant. It's completely disassembled right now. This is a 20 gallon tank. So I'm going to get back into the physics, you know. I'm, I'm sorry I'm not covering all the gear and things like that. It's going to take me a little while, okay? I'm just starting up my channel again, you know. It's really tough. We're going to make some oxyhydrogen flames. We're going to make some huge flames. We're going to study the table of elements, but it's the physics that I'm trying to get across to you guys right now. I want you to understand how all this works, okay? So this video is going to be about the oxygen atom. So hang in there, guys. It'll get more exciting. But you got to understand some of this stuff. You can't just jump into HHO without seeing what's happening, what's going on, you know? How do you produce the gas efficiently, economically, and do it clean? You know, how do you produce the amounts of electricity that I'm producing? You know, how did I build a bubbler like that? I'm going to teach you guys this. This is my reactor core over here. This is my hydrogen fuel cell. It's very powerful. These are oxyhydrogen fuel cells. I'll show you guys how to make a splitter cell in the future. Almost like a Hoffman apparatus, but with huge magnets. So that's coming down the road. So, so hang in there, okay? I know it's a little boring. Physics, that's why a lot of people aren't into it, because it's, it's a lot of stuff. you got to understand the way atoms work, the way molecules are put together. It's a lot. It's a lot. I'm not going to lie. You have to understand it. So we're going to go back down to studying these subatomic particles. The water molecule. We're going we're to study the water. Pure oxyhydrogen gas. That's a stoichiometric mixture of HHO. That's a two to one. So as we look closer at the oxygen atom, we're going to understand how the water molecule forms in the first place. Okay? So hang in there. I'm going to try to keep this video a little more exciting. I'm going to show you guys some more stuff. I'm going to go into here to my laboratory computer. Oh, where is it? I guess a picture's worth a thousand words. I'm going to go in here and show you some of the stuff we will be getting into once you understand some of the physics, okay? What do we got? I'm just going to show you some images here of what what we'll be building and what you'll be working with. Okay. We're going to build stars from hydrogen using catalysts. We'll build some oxyhydrogen fuel cell reactors. We're going to produce some flames. Okay. I'm going to show you guys how to bend light, make electricity using solar panels, capturing photons from the stars you create. So some very intense science here. So see, all the exciting stuff's coming, guys. Right now we're stuck in the physics. I'm teaching you all about the water molecule, how all this works. What's going on? Where's the light coming from? How am I doing all this? Okay. You gotta remember this water is like liquid starlight, liquid sunlight, okay? The power of the sun is in this water. 
It's in this reactor. Most of you've seen my pulsar reactor. All this fits together right there on the plasma core attachment. So hang in there guys. We gotta get through the physics first before you get into the good stuff. There's my reactor under a flashback. Pretty cool, huh? Alright, the oxygen atom right here on the table of elements. You can clearly see number 8 is its atomic number. It's where it gets its place, right in there between nitrogen and fluorine. Okay. Got this little 30 second elements here. I'm going to let you guys read this just to give you something to look at and read. You can just pause the video. So there's no combustion without oxygen, okay? So what happens when you create a vacuum? You can see it in this little depiction right here. See? You gotta think about what matter is made of, okay? And the oxygen atom can increase the strength of other fuels. It's what gives hydrogen, it's what gives HHO its strength, okay? This is where it picks up all its strength, because you gotta remember the hydrogen gas by itself isn't even flammable. Okay, so the oxygen atom is extremely important, extremely important. I'll close up my book here and get my voltage meter out of the way. If you take a closer look here at this 2D depiction I have of the oxygen atom, okay, you can clearly see that it has two electron holes. There's room for two more electrons. It's missing two electrons. So it's a very reactive element. Oxygen can be added to many fuels to increase their strength. It, it can make gas hot enough to cut through steel. You can have ordinary propane, butane, and add oxygen. That's how they blow glass. Okay, by adding oxygen, you increase the strength of gas. It what controls the state of combustion. It's very important. It is the power and the strength in HHO. Okay? When these two when hydrogen's mixed with oxygen like this, when it's mixed mixed together in a stylochromatic ratio two to one okay you have 66 percent hydrogen and 33 percent oxygen and that's kind of weird that gives you the number 666 that's weird that's hidden in the water but anyways you get those amounts broken up into HHO gas so it's a stylochromatic mixture it's a two to one mixture of hydrogen and oxygen it's very important to remember that and your water molecule when you break that apart in the water, when you break apart the water molecule, you're going to have hydrogen and oxygen gas. Those two gases is what makes up the water molecule. That's what makes up the water. Two gases. Okay? So my lord, the, the importance of this atom on the table of elements is paramount. It's absolutely incredible how important this atom is. It controls all the other atoms. Think about that. You can't have combustion or do anything without this one. Now that's crazy, but it's not so crazy. It's doubly magic in nuclear physics. It's a long story, but this, this is rated as a very important atom. Physicists know this. It controls the combustion rate of all the other atoms. It's an incredible fact. It controls the breath of fire, the breath of life. Okay? You can't have a combustion process without the oxygen atom. It's a precious atom. The gods themselves put a lot of time and a lot of effort into making that atom. You know, when you take a good look at it, you can clearly see how it was built. And uh, it's a very stable atom. That's why it's doubly magic. It's a very stable atom, but you got to remember it's also a highly reactive atom. It's very oxidizing because it's missing two electrons. And it will do anything to fill this outer shell. It will link up with another atom very quickly very quickly okay 
You gotta remember that. I'm gonna cut this and move on. All right, back in here again. If you take a good look at the oxygen atom, you can clearly see it has eight protons, eight electrons, and eight neutrons. Okay? Sorry, that got a little messed up. I spilled some water on it. See, and there's the electron holes right there in its outer electron orbit shell. It's very important. It's very important. This is a very stable element. Okay? Now, I mean, when you look down at the atomic level, it's very stable in that sense. You know, the level of its geometry and the way it was built. It's not radioactive. It's not an atom that's going to fall apart anytime soon. It's very stable, kind of like nitrogen. Okay? A highly reactive oxidizing agent, though, due to the fact it has two missing electrons. It's very quick to oxidize things. That's what happens in your electrolysis cell. But really fast, really fast, it starts to make rust out of your stainless steel on the positive side. It speeds that process up very quickly. Very quickly. The oxygen atom is a very oxidizing agent. You gotta remember that. It's because of its outer shell, its electron orbit. So I hope that help covers the oxygen atom, okay? That gives you a brief description of the electrolysis process in the water molecule, okay? How, how it's formed, the oxygen atom's role, where it sits on the table of elements, how reactive it is, how stable it is, and how it has the power to increase and control every other atom on the table of elements. Every other atom. So without this, life just does not exist. Okay? Hydrogen may be the first element in the building blocks of life, but without the oxygen atom and its role, nothing can work. Nothing will function. Okay? So, remember these subatomic particles, the proton, the neutron, which has no charge, the positive charge of the proton, and the negative charge of the electron. And how the electron is just 21st century fire spinning around these atoms, and it's all a matter of how clever you are, okay, to get them to do what you want and manipulate the atoms themselves. And you got to remember, there's only a few things that control the atom. So in physics, we know, we understand that there are four forces, four forces that control the atom, okay? And that is, they are, okay? The electrical force, the weak and strong nuclear force, electromagnetic forces, and the last one being voltage. And voltage controls all four, okay? You have the electrical force, the electromagnetic forces, weak and strong nuclear force, and that has to do with a lot with the proton and some of the smaller connections here and their magnetism. And then you have voltage, which applies to all four. Just like when you look in a neon tube, they use high voltage electricity to excite the atoms to get the gas to glow. And that works with a lot of different gases. Okay? So I'm just trying to explain a little bit about oxygen atom, the gas that it is, and it has many other forms. Oxygen can actually be turned into a liquid state, but we're not going to get into that. I just wanted to cover some of the basics. So there you go. I hope that helps understanding of the oxygen atom and the formation of the water molecule.